Good day ladies and gentlemen, this is Sarah van Grenen aka Mr. VG and this is now the third video in this series about trigonometry in paper 2. This video specifically is going to be about solving of triangles. Remember that I'm taking questions out of the Department of Basic Education, the Gauteng Department of Education, Paper 2 that they wrote in 2020. So the first question is a theory question, but it is a theory question that I have not seen being asked often. It is a theory question that your teacher most probably will look at this video and go, Ooh, I did not teach my students the sine rule or the cosine rule for that reason. But they can ask it of you, although it's not often asked. So what I did in this case is I put P in standard form. Now why I did this was just to make life a little bit easier to get the value of or to prove that specific um, theorem. So first of all, what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to construct that I'm going to construct a triangle there, RSP. Why am I doing that specifically? Because there is a 90 degree there. Okay? So what I'm going to do in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, is I am going to get two expressions that represent the line of RS. And those two expressions have to be the same because RS is only represented by one side. So, what am I doing? I'm first of all getting angle RPS, as you saw me write down there. It's 180 degrees minus angle P. So, in triangle RSP, I am getting RS over RP. That is opposite over hypotenuse. Because remember, I'm looking in that triangle there. And this is sin of angle RPS. So therefore, RS is equal to RP times pi or sine of 180 minus P. Because remember, I get that from there. And Q, remember, is that side there, and that is P, and that is R. Okay? I hope that you're fine with that. But now also, I am going to look in triangle RSQ. So I'm repeating this exact same process. But now, I'm looking at the big triangle there. Triangle RSQ. Now in triangle RSQ, if I take RS over RQ, I again have sine of Q. And solving for RS, this is going to give me that RS is also P sine of Q. Remember it was Q sine of P not that long ago. So those two expressions have to be equal to one another because they both represent Rs. Which means I can divide both sides by sine P, first of all, as well as sine Q. Why do I do that? Because on the left-hand side, okay, my sine P is divided away, and on the right-hand side, my sine Q's divide away. And this leads me with Q over sine of Q equal to P over sine P. But, sir, that's exactly what you asked me to prove. Ta-da! Magic! This is something that you can go and study. You can learn how to do this yourself. Okay? So, it's... An interesting little theory question, and there are many other ways of also proving the sign 
as well as the cosine rule. I haven't seen it being asked much or many times, so I was a bit surprised and I had to think about this, even though I've done it a number of times. So when we look at the meaty part of the question, it says there, 7.2, from I, the angle of elevation to the vertices, pole KL is x degrees along a slope, KI. And from J, which is D meters from the tower, the angle of elevation is Y degrees. Show that the height of the tower is given by that. So I want to give you a few minutes. You go and try it yourself. Come back and then we work through this question step by step. When I give a sum like this to my students, I tell them there's one secret and one secret that remains. You must split up your sum. So in other words, after I've written in those values that I've got there, Remember, where do I get those values from? First of all, I got the 180 minus Y from angles on a straight line. And angle L1 I got because L1 plus X must be Y, exterior angles of a triangle. Now that I've got that, I'm going to do what I said earlier. Let's split up our triangles. So first of all, I've got triangle L, K, J. Then I've got triangle L, J, I. Okay? So L, K, J and L, J, I. I'm putting in as much information as I can. Okay? I've got X, I've got Y minus X and I've got 180 minus y. And what I also love to do is just highlight the common side. So LJ is LJ because I can guarantee you, ladies and gents, we are going to use LJ to solve that just because it is a common side between the two triangles. So first of all, after I've now just redrawn it, remember, highlight your common sides. I love doing that. Sorry, oh, wrong one. Don't, don't, don't judge me. It's load shedding. I'm getting tired of load shedding. But in any case, after I've highlighted that, now I'm going to first of all start in triangle LJI. And I'm going to work specifically with a cosine or with a sine rule. Now, how do I know that I've got to work with a sine rule? Let me give you a little bit of a tip. There's always a decision tree that I work with. My first question is, is there a 90 degrees? Yes or no? If my answer is yes, then I'm going to work with Sokotoa. If my answer is a resounding no, if my answer is a resounding no, why do I write 90? If my answer is a no, I've got sine, cosine, or area to think about. Now, how do I know that I want to work with a sine rule? Because I've got two angles. When do I use the cosine rule? Whenever I work with three sides. In this case, I've got two angles. I've got the X and I've got the Y minus X. Therefore, I knew that I was going to work in the sine rule as well as there's no 90 degrees there. So I've got to try and get LJ alone. So I'm multiplying that sine of X to the top. And now I've got an expression for that common side. If 
from that common side, I'm now moving over to the other triangle. I'm moving to triangle KLJ. Now with triangle KLJ, there's a 90 degrees. So I'm going to work with Sokotova. So I'm going to say, well, H over LJ is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. And this is going to be sine of angle Y. Multiplying both sides by LJ, I've got H to be LJ sine of Y. But LJ has got a, an expression, D sine X over sine Y minus X. And oh my goodness, this is exactly what I wanted to prove. Simple and straightforward, ladies and gentlemen. So there's always a logical process. Is there a 90 degrees? Yes or no. If it's a yes, so Katoa. If it's a no, well, I'm going to ask either sine, cosine, or area rule. Let's have a look at the next question. Remember, for 7.2, it says the height, but I already proved the height to be that. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute the values that they gave me into that expression and then get an answer for H. Very simple, very straightforward. Ladies and gentlemen, this process I'm going to follow to a T when it comes to metric work. The only difference is in metric work, I'm going to work in three dimensions. But don't get frightened. You're still going to deconstruct your sketch into two-dimensional triangles and do everything exactly the same. Ladies and gents, this was a hang of a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are going to enjoy the rest of the videos coming up. I still have in this section of work, I still have that beautiful section of Euclidean geometry to come up. So I hope you are going to stay tuned. I hope you're going to enjoy it. And I do hope that you are just going to have lots of fun with me in the next videos. So keep yourself safe. I hope that your power is on, both in electricity and in your mind. This is Mr. VG signing out. Cheers.